What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Paris Hart, and you're tuning into another episode of the Love It Podcast. Today, we got a dope up and coming artist. Today, we have Lilac. Hello, I'm so excited to be here. Hey, so first things first, how'd you come up with the name? Um, so lilac is actually my favorite color, but it's like a really pleasant color. Like you think of it, you think of pastels, it's very light, but I wanted to spell it with the word lie to add like a darkness to it. Cause I feel like that's me. Like I'm very bubbly on the outside, but there's like an underlayer of kind of something more. When someone comes up to you and says, Oh, like lilac, you're an artist. What type of music do you make? What's your response to that? Um, I'm kind of really all over the place. Um, it's really whatever I'm feeling like I sing what I know. And, um, a lot of it is mental health related because music helps me cope with everything. So a lot of stuff like that. Oh, so that's a great topic. And that's, that's great that like your music has more meaning than just the typical, oh, like, this is what people want to hear. This is what people want to know. When did you really really find yourself and were okay with being open about, okay, like, this is what I want to talk about. And this is how I'm going to say it. Um, so to be honest with you, I don't know that I like even still have found that place of comfortability. I just know that like nothing heals me the way music does. Like I, I truly believe I wouldn't be alive without it. So it's kind of just like a, like a need for it. Like I need to have it in my life as scary as it can be sometimes. Hey, so what's your creative process like when you're going in to write a song? Is it okay, this is the mood I'm feeling? Or is it a beat that you hear first? What is what is your creative process like? Um, so it's the beat that I hear first. And then it's crazy because I'm a habitual overthinker. It's kind of like what I'm good at. <laughs> and when I'm writing, it's like the one time that I don't think. It just kind of flows right out. And whatever comes out is whatever it is. Hey, so that's that's pretty cool that it's like, I'm not going to think about it. This is my feeling. This is what I really want to say. And this is what I'm going to say. Yeah, exactly. So how would you say your environment really influenced you in your music? Like, were you, were you in an environment that was like, okay, this is the sound everyone's listening to. So I'm going to that. Or was it like, you know, I found this and it's really different from like what I'm used to. I think it was a little bit of both. Like I'm very inspired by current people like Ariana Grande, Dua Lipa, Kendrick. Um, So I do try to like stay with the people that inspire me and their sound. Um, But I also get really inspired by different stuff because I did grow up on like the Beatles and Queen. And so I grew up on styles that are not super current. So kind of a mix of both. Is there any side that you lean into more? probably the older like the older style more as weird as it is I just feel like I can get more emotion out because I feel like the newer stuff is it's a bop but it's not always like easy to be emotional with new beats because it's very like fun and you need those beats too but I like like the really gritty kind of stuff yeah the older stuff just has that oomph of like that soul yeah like, mm. it does so speaking of some other artists what other artists would you work with um I would love to work with Kendrick I would love to work with Megan the Stallion um Ariana Grande Dua Lipa I would I would die any of those people I would just fall over and die <laughs> hey, hey, we're putting it in the air we're putting it in fruition right <laughs> since getting into music what's the best piece of advice that you've gotten that you would want to relay to anybody else that's trying to get into music um, it's so it's the same with social media as it is with music like I compare myself a lot I compare myself to other artists like I'm working so hard but I don't have the numbers I don't have the followers I don't have this and that and a lot of it is bought like I know that that's not what people want to hear but a lot of it is bought so just really taking things at face value and not losing the fun of it because I feel like I lost a lot of the fun in it the fun of it excuse me in like the numbers and the algorithm and like that's not why I did it I did it to help people so really just take things you see on social media face value and just remind yourself why you got into it in the first place yeah and it's it's so tough I we actually had this conversation in season one where our artist was talking about like he put five thousand dollars into like growing his social media just to get it and like it's, it's a tough world we live in with social media because with social media, it seems like you almost have to be popping before people say that you're popping. And yeah. it's, 
it the fine line has been so blurred of like okay this person is a good artist this person is has a really good craft and their sound is amazing versus like oh this person really doesn't put effort into music but they had a million followers from doing something else before and it's it's really like the love of it and the people that are around you like the support system you have is what makes making music fun and like saying okay i made this song and showing it to everyone around you and hearing hearing some of the critiques and what i try to tell a lot of the artists that like are out there and everyone listening out there is that once you once you love the craft and you love it then the sky's the limit and the numbers are gonna come so like exactly don't don't fall victim to like looking at somebody like oh my god this person makes some terrible music and they have 20 bajillion followers like no like exactly it's tough and so how do you feel about promoting on social media versus promoting in life in like real life uh so I actually just did my first show so promoting in real life I never really got into and I kind of just started on both because I was so worried that I was going to be annoying I was like I can't talk about it because everybody's doing music and I don't want to be annoying and I had one of my artist friends that was like so you know, if you annoy them, like they, they weren't for you. Like if they leave, then they weren't meant to be there in the first place. And it was, it took that conversation with her to really like conceptualize, like, yeah, you're right. Like, who cares if I annoy some people, then they were going to leave eventually anyway. So. For real. And speaking about that, like, it's so, it's so important to make sure the people that you have around you are the right people are the people yeah. that not only help you with music, but the people that help you with your mental health in life. So how important would you say your support system has been? Oh, it's been like, I I couldn't do it without them. And I appreciate the support base I have because they're very honest. Like, you know, obviously they don't want to hurt my feelings, but if I'm messing up, they're going to tell me. And I find that a lot of people are scared of that. And those are the people that you need in your corner, like the people that are going to tell you stuff that you don't necessarily want to hear, but they care enough to let you know anyway, because they know it's going to help you grow. So by keeping those people around me, I mean, I probably would have quit by now, honestly, without them. And it's not for like a lack of love with music. It's just the stress that comes with it and not feeling good enough. Like without them, I, I wouldn't be here. So yeah there's there's a lot of stress that come with music what's what's the hardest thing and the best thing that you've witnessed since getting into music I think the hardest thing is definitely like people not taking you seriously because of the numbers um because I've actually noticed a lot of micro influencers can sell more merch than a big influencer because they have real audiences that really like ride for them and so that can be frustrating when you're you're working so hard you're taking yourself seriously you're taking your craft seriously and like something like numbers can be the thing that's like, well, clearly you're not that good. Like that's really disheartening. Um, I would say the best thing though, is the people that have been helped by my music because sure it's not millions yet, (laughs) but that's everything. Cause that's all I do it for. Like it's a safe space for me. I want it to be a safe space for other people. So when it is a safe space for other people, like that's, there's no way to describe it. It's amazing. And speaking of your music, you released 1111 on April 8th. What was it like creating that? It was awesome. So I actually wrote that in 20 minutes. <laughs> I uh, I wrote it on the way to the studio. I had a whole session. I didn't even have the song written yet, but I was so inspired by it. And it it just flowed so naturally for me. And the beat having like kind of two distinct sounds really helped me put into words the dichotomy of like having somebody around you that's toxic and knowing that they're toxic and that you could do better, but still having those moments of like, but I do miss them. And I like this about them, like kind of the mix of what it really is like to cut someone off. Cause I feel like a lot of songs, like you just cut them off and it's, and it's over, but it's not like that. Like you can know someone's bad for you and still miss them and still want to be around them. Yeah, and you can't you can't really control love. Love's the hardest thing to control. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that was a fun one. I really like that one. Hey, so what what other singles and what or you spoke about shows earlier. How would you feel about creating or performing? Which one do you like to do more? Oof, um, I have anxiety, so performing still kind of scares me. 
So I'd say creating for now, but I honestly think I like them both in different ways because I do like to be able to like actually see people in front of me. I think that's really cool. But creating, like you have your own time, you're in your own space, you can just make whatever you want. So probably creating for now. Hey, is there like an alter ego when you get into creating? Like, you know, I'm Lilac or this is this is who I am when I record. Oh yeah, absolutely there is. And it's it's crazy to see because a lot of the times like my music will know how I feel before I do. Like my music will be like, tell me how I feel about a situation before I even know I do. It's really crazy to experience. <laughs> it's almost like you're getting in touch with like the deeper self, like, okay, everything's superficial out the way. This is how I truly feel. Yeah, it's wild. It's a wild experience. Mm, dang. So what what's that process like of going to the studio? Is there like a ritual that you have to do or like this is I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this before I record? Uh, so I usually like try to vibe out, try to clear my head and make sure I'm like in a good headspace. I usually do my vocal training and get really self-conscious about it on the way there. <laughs> And then I'm um, just, I do get nervous at the studio. I do get anxious around people. So just really trying to like understand why I'm there, understand like what's going to help me overcome that anxiety and then kind of just go for it. It is like, like assuming another character almost like you're saying. Wow. Is it, so did you hear it back and you're like, wow, this is how I felt. That's pretty deep. Or do you hear it back and you're like, yeah, I planned that. Um. So I honestly don't think my music is, that good until other people tell me because I'm very self-critical so like I'll hear it and I'll be like that was okay you know I think that was fine and then I'll show it to like my friends or my boyfriend they'll be like what like you did that and I'll be like yeah I mean I thought it was okay and so when other people hype me up that's when I'm like oh it is good okay <laughs> well where do you see your music taking you in the next five years um, I would love to do it full time. I'd love to do tours. I know like people, I have some people in the UK that have been supporting me since day one that have wanted me to do shows there. So I'd love to do anything and everything with it. And really just music is my main focus, but I'd love to act as well. I'd love to do like um, pretty much anything creative, like design, fashion design, graphic design, anything. I I'm, I'm ready to do anything but sleep because that's what I do now. So. <laughs> Hey, so we're, we're putting that in fruition. Right. So everyone, all the managers out there, all the other artists out there, you know who you got to hit up then. <laughs> yes, please. Because I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I need some help for sure. So, yeah, just. <laughs> <laughs> what if for all the people listening out there, what is something that you want them to remember about Lilac? Like, this is why I should go check out her page. This is why I should go check her out. And this is why I should go vibe with her. Uh, I would say that there's always layers to my music. Like I would say you listen to it the first time and every time you listen to it, there's always going to be something different that you find, whether it be like a harmony or be like words that you didn't know were there. Like there's always Easter eggs in my music. Um, so that is something that I find interesting. And also just like, that's my life. Like, you know, I've spoken about it before, but I, I have PTSD. I have like very real mental health issues and that is the one place I channel them. And so if anybody else is feeling the effects of that or feeling alone or just feeling like they have nowhere to turn, I get that. I feel like that all the time. And that's exactly why I make my music. Mm. So, so everyone out there listening, you know why you should go check her out. She's mm -hmm. a dope individual who makes some dope music. Um, where can our listeners go and find you at? So I am everywhere under Lilac, that's L-I-E-L-A-C, because no lies here. I am on TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Instagram. I'm everywhere. You can't get away from me now because I'm everywhere. <laughs> you don't want to get away from some great music. So when you see her on your Explore page, when you see Lilac everywhere, go check it out. Go send her the follow. Go send her the subscribe. And just stay connected. You want to follow individuals and be connected with individuals on social media that aren't just trying to flex all the time, who aren't just trying to show off and who get, are giving you the raw version of themselves and some raw music. So go check it out. Thank you. And I have new music coming soon. It's really fire. I must say so myself. Hey, and you have to be on tune now because when that music drops, you want to, you want to be the one to put your friends on. You don't want your friends to be the ones to put you on. <laughs> thank you i appreciate that anytime and 
you know, thank you for being a part of the podcast. Thank you for having me. I love your podcast. I was like fangirling out watching it. So thank you for having me. <laughs> Anytime. Just thank you for being raw and thank you for being unapologetically yourself. 